Japanese chin 101. How long do Japanese chin sleep for on average? Write what you think the answer is in the comments below and we'll reveal the answer at the end of the video, so watch till the end. Hey everybody, welcome to Top 10 Doggy. Today, we're going to go over really cool dog breed info for Japanese chins. History and background. The Japanese chin originates from? Well, it's not really known exactly where they are from. However, it is believed that the Japanese chin was either brought to Japan from China or Korea. Why is the breed called the Japanese chin, you ask? Well, the Japanese would go on to cultivate the look and popularity of the modern-day Japanese chin. The name Japanese chin comes from the fact that this breed was differentiated from the other breeds that carry the name, Inu, or, Ken, which means, dog, in Japanese. Almost as if to say that the chin was different from the categorization of dog. Although the Japanese chin is obviously a dog, most of the dogs in Japan were hunting dogs that resemble wolves, whereas the chin is a toy breed and lapdog. Toy breed and lapdog are not synonymous, however. Toy breed refers to any small dog that has been bred down to size. This categorization transcends dog breed, meaning that any dog breed that fits this category, for instance, spaniels, pinchers, and terriers, can be considered toy breeds. A lap dog refers to any dog that is small enough to physically sit on a person's lap and also has the affectionate and overly attached nature to want to do that. With that said, please note that every lap dog must be a toy breed, but not every toy breed has to be a lap dog. It's the classic rectangle and a square argument, except this time it's fuzzy and has massive eyes. The immediate ancestors of the Japanese chin are speculated to be an ancient Asian chin combined with a spaniel to differentiate it as the Japanese chin. In fact, Western countries referred to the Japanese chin as the Japanese spaniel until recently. It's said that the Japanese chin goes back 500 to 1500 years ago. The theories on the origins of the Japanese chin state that either Chinese imperials or Korean imperials gifted the emperor or empress of Japan with a chin. After that point, the Japanese cherished the breed and the breed was only found in the homes of royalty. The Japanese chin was not bred for hunting. These dogs are considered companion dogs, meaning that their sole purpose is to look cute and provide comfort to their owners. In fact, they probably wouldn't survive long out in the wild without humans. Nowadays, Japanese chins are mainly used as house pets, although not reserved only for royal families. The Japanese chin came to be known in Western countries as Japan started opening up to foreigners. It's said that the first occurrence of the breed outside of Japan was in Portugal for Princess Catherine of Braganza. Later in the mid-19th century when Commodore Matthew Perry of the US would force Japan to do open trade with the West, the Japanese chin's popularity would spread. Commodore Perry would go on to take one back to the US for his daughter, President Jefferson Pierce would give one to his Secretary of War, Jefferson Davis, and even King Edward VII would give one to his wife, Queen Alexandra, who would go on to name the dog punch. The American Kennel Club would go on to recognize the dog breed in their registries in 1888 as the Japanese Spaniel and would later go on to correct the name to Japanese Chin in 1977. That's some pretty interesting history. Appearance. As far as appearance, Japanese Chin are regarded as some of the cutest and most elegant looking dogs. Japanese Chins, for the most part, are really small-sized dogs, coming in at a height of 7 to 11 inches or 18 to 28 centimeters and weighing 4 to 15 pounds or 2 to 7 kilograms on average. These royal hounds have short, flat snouts with long, fluffy manes and usually a small black nose. Their eyes are large black with dark irises and their face has a symmetric multicolor pattern. These dogs have that adorable wide-eyed, slightly averted eyesight. Their ears can best be described as long, plumed and draping down the side of their face. The fur coats of these royal hounds are long, silky and very clean. Their fur colors are black and white, black, tan and white, lemon and white, red and white, sable and white. They are fragile dogs and can easily be hurt by other dogs or roughhousing small children. Their tails are plumed and hang over their backs. Traits and behavior. Japanese chin are typically empathetic, intelligent, and cat-like. They commonly display empathy behavior by adapting to the mood or vibes of their owner and household. They are also really good at understanding the emotions of their owners. For example, if you're in a bad mood or feel sad, your chin may come up to you and just calmly lay on your lap, or if you feel pretty energetic or happy you Japanese chin may run around or start singing. For this reason, Japanese chins are said to make great therapy dogs, especially with their adorable faces. They also commonly display intelligence by being highly alert of their surroundings and adaptable. For example, these dogs aren't great at housebreaking, but they do learn other tricks fast and may even get bored if training drags on. 
Their cat-like nature can also be seen in the way they constantly bathe themselves and always seem to end up climbing absurdly high in obscure places. Exercise and trainability. On average, Japanese chins are not very active dogs with a tendency to be pretty relaxed and only need to go for short walks, but even just a little bit of running around the house or backyard keeps them content. Therefore, Japanese chins are very adaptable to more sedentary lifestyles, like apartment life. Japanese chins are not likely to be aggressive to other animals at home or on walks. Japanese chins are said to be slightly independent in nature, meaning they are not likely to come back to you when called if they are interested in going elsewhere. For this reason it would be best to walk this dog on a leash. Also, you may want to use a full body harness instead of a simple neck leash, as this breed has a very sensitive neck. If you own a Japanese chin, you may want to start training your dog from an early age and acting as a pack leader with positive reinforcement to prevent your chin from developing small dog syndrome and thinking they can be overly aggressive with others to get their way. Also, get your dog out to socialize with other people and dogs to prevent them from being anxious around new experiences. If you like the video so far please make sure to hit that like button. And check out the link in the description if you want to train your dog to be more obedient by unlocking your dog's natural intelligence. Maintenance and care. Speaking of fun activities to do with your dog, you may also want to consider the level of maintenance for owning a Japanese chin. Surprisingly, Japanese chins are low maintenance dogs, not requiring more than the basic sustenance, love and attention that the average dog needs. For these types of dogs, because they constantly clean themselves, are very attached, and independent, you will want to brush them once a week and try not to leave them alone for too long, because they develop separation anxiety. However, baths don't have to be as frequent as with other dog breeds because of their cat-like cleaning habits. Of course, you'll want to keep their ears, teeth, nose and eyes clean. By doing these things you can help them be healthier and happier. Health conditions. Japanese chins are pretty healthy and live to 10 years on average. However, they can have genetic complications that include cataracts, entropion, corneal abrasions, patellar luxation, epilepsy, gangliosidosis, and heart murmurs. This breed is also prone to heat-related issues and brachycephalic due to their short muzzles which causes respiratory and dental issues for them. So maintain a preventive dental care program from puppyhood on and if your dog is itching, has redness of skin, or hair loss, head for the vet right away. It can be difficult to detect these conditions in a growing puppy, however, if you find a reputable breeder who is committed to breeding the healthiest animals possible, they should be able to produce a health registry that shows the lineage of the dog has been screened and deemed healthy for breeding. When a Japanese chin gets examined for gangliosidosis, patellar luxation, a cardiac evaluation, and an eye exam after three years old, the owner can have the results submitted to the Orthopedic Foundation for Animals or OFA, to be assigned a canine health information center number or chic number for short. This will put the Japanese chin in an online database so anyone with that number can look up the dog's health status before buying. This organization is for dogs residing in the US and Canada, but the OFA website states owners can submit their country's equivalent health screening results for dogs residing outside the US or Canada and it will be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. It should be noted that despite following all the best practices, any dog can still develop many health complications or diseases naturally. However, advances in veterinary medicine can help your dog live a good life if you notice signs early and act appropriately. Furthermore, the easiest way to prolong your Japanese chin's life is keeping them at a healthy weight and regular exercise. Popularity. There aren't a lot of details on the most popular dogs from this breed. In fact, most times the emphasis seems to be more on the owner than the dog. Therefore, I will simply list some of the most famous dogs from this breed. Some historically famous Japanese chins include, Queen Alexandra's dog, Punch, Commodore Perry's dog, Ozzy Osbourne had a Japanese chin, and Queen Victoria's chin. These dogs and their owners helped popularize the breed in the West and then Ozzy Osbourne is here because he's freaking Ozzy Osbourne. Recommendation. If you're looking to own a Japanese chin, due to the fact that Japanese chins are independent, empathetic, and easily can develop separation anxiety, we recommend an owner who is able to devote time and attention to their dog, has lots of patience, and is more of an indoors or relaxed type of person. This dog is very easy and friendly, so first-time dog owners are usually fine making a Japanese chin a first pick. Having these qualities would ensure that the dog is properly taken care of and with a compatible owner. You can expect to pay $1,500 to $2,500 for the average Japanese chin. I bet you didn't know that Japanese chins sleep for 16 to 18 hours a day. Let us know if you got that question right in the comments below. 
Don't forget to check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching.